Hello everyone. This is a no save, no damage playthrough of Resident Evil 1's HD Remaster. We are playing the PC version. We are playing on real survival difficulty, and we are going for the best ending. Throughout the game, I'll go a little bit into detail on what real survival difficulty is, as well as getting a perfect ending. Without further ado, please enjoy. Resident Evil. Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle of their mission. Found it yet? No, not yet, Brad. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about ten people. Victims were apparently eaten. The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris! Bravo team's helicopter was a derelict. Save for the remaining body of Kevin. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare. This way. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Barry, and myself. We don't know where Chris is. What is this place? Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. Hey, Wesker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. But we've got to find... What was that? Chris? No. Jill, go and investigate. I'm going with her. Chris and I go back a long way. All right. You two go. I'll secure this area. Stay sharp. <clears throat> a dining room.
So the first thing we're going to do is unequip our handgun and go back through the door. This is going to initiate a special cutscene. I'm counting on you to investigate, Jill. Sure thing, Wesker. We are going to go back through that door again. Whenever I decide to move. Got cold feet already? That's not like you. I think you'd better take a look at this. What is it? Blood. Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Let's just hope it's not Chris's. Let's hope it's not Chris's blood. Anyways, so once this cutscene ends, we're gonna go ahead and grab the shield. And we get a new cutscene. Who is it? You! Freeze! Get away from him, Jill! He's insane! What the hell? We better report this to Wesker. So now let's head back to the dining room. Not the dining room, let's head back to the lobby. We're in the dining room. Wesker! Jill, help me look for him. Let's not leave this hall. Good idea. So we'll just skate our way up the stairs and then come back down. Barry. Any luck, Jill? No, nothing. What's going on around here? I can't figure it out. Same here. Chris, and now Wesker. There's not much we can do. We can search for him separately. I'll investigate the dining room again. Okay, then. I'll try the door on the other side. <sighs> this mansion is gigantic. We could easily get lost. Let's start from the first floor. Okay. Oh! I almost forgot. It's a lockpick. You'd make better use of it. Thanks. I may need it. Listen. If something happens, let's meet up in this hall. Got it? Okay. Well, after all, you're the master of unlocking. So, now we begin our game. We're wearing the Resident Evil 3 trademark costume. Just a little backstory on why she has the lockpick and why that joke's relevant. The actual canon lore is that Jill, her father, was a master thief that was actually arrested. Before she joined up with Stars, and she was, I think, Delta, you know, in the military, she actually was a thief, too. She was very good at pickpocketing and breaking into doors. So now we're inside of the murder hallway. Aside from the trivia, we'll go ahead and grab the golden arrow. It's very important to grab this ammo. What we're going to do is we're going to use this little statue right here to bait the zombie and then run right around him. Now, you can dodge around him without it, but it could be very annoying. The detection on real survival is quite difficult. They really follow you instead of lunging, like on normal difficulty. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the golden arrow to the cemetery... We want to make sure we take out these two zombies. Now, these zombies actually can never turn into Crimson Heads. Not 100% uh, sure why, but once they die, they're basically done. So we're definitely going to want shotgun shells for this run. Now, uh, one thing I am going to make sure 
we all understand is that ammo is very scarce on real survival mode. What real survival mode entails is basically the exact way that the developers actually wanted hard mode to originally be. What that means is save chests or item chests are not linked. And what that means is if you put an item like your handgun in a specific chest, it will be in that specific chest. You will have to go back and get it. So you really kind of have to route what you're doing as if it is real life. That's why it's called real survival. Also, auto-aim is disabled. You have to make sure that your shots count. And enemies and boss battles are... stronger. So throughout the run, we keep all of the cutscenes. We also look at some text that we find around to kind of explain what's happened at the mansion. So before we push on ahead, we're going to push this cabinet, and there is a dagger. Daggers, as well as the stun gun, are going to be absolutely important in this run. Because if enemies grab onto you, we have something to defend ourselves. The one thing that's actually much easier about Jill in comparison to Chris, is that she has more item slots, as well as she has a lockpick. So any doors that Chris would need a small key for, she could just open. We're going to go over to the bathtub here. Get it on your shoes there, Jill. All right. So, reason being, we wanted the dagger that's inside of the shower or bathtub. And the greatest thing is, is that if we see a dagger, we're going to pick up a dagger. Now, one cool thing also about Jill's run is that she doesn't need the broken shotgun in order to get the shotgun. God, what did I do now? Wesker! Barry! Help! Jill! You in there? Barry? Get me out of here! The door's jammed! Stand back! <clears throat> Grab my hand! <sighs> That was a close one. A second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. Really? Thanks. But Barry, didn't you say you were going back to the dining room to find other clues? I'm glad and all, but why are you here? I just had something I wanted to check. Anyway, we should get back to searching for Wesker and Chris. Thanks, Barry. I owe you one. Don't mention it. You know what you should have mentioned, though, Barry? She's a Jill sandwich. I can't believe they took that out. So we're going to switch between alternate controls and tank controls. We want to use the analog stick to get around that zombie fast. That's one thing I forgot to mention, which is very important in a run like this. You want to get comfortable with using both sets of controls. So 
find out a little bit about what's going on in the Spencer Mansion. I kind of want to make this zombie lunge past us. Sometimes, unfortunately, that does not happen. We'll skate our way up the stairs, and now we want to beat this zombie by slowly backing up. Unfortunately for me, he did not want any of me right now. So we're going to let him go on the stairs. Now, the trick with the stairs is, if a zombie is on the stairs, all they can do is vomit. So we could just skate around him. That guy, I just recommend hugging the wall. We need to make sure that we grab the lighter and the dog whistle here. So if at any, any moment I go too fast through the text, feel free to pause the video so that you could read and uh, understand what's going on in these different journal entries. We're going to want to bait these zombies around so that we could come right back around to the lobby. Barry. Jill, got any good news? Other than I'm still alive in this madhouse? No. Can't say it's much safer here either. We'd better secure our escape route first. There's gotta be a back door somewhere. All right then, let's split up again. Hey, hold on a sec. Look what I've found. What? A can of fizz. It's sure to yellow and mellow those things. It's yours. Hopefully you won't have to use it. What about you? Oh, don't worry. I like the buddy system we have here. I see. Thanks. I'll take it. See you later. Ciao. Yeah, some suspicious activity going on with Barry and his magnum, but we're not going to discuss that. But we got a can of fizz, which we will use later on on a specific boss fight. So now we're heading over to the courtyard where we can get the collar. The dog collar has something important inside of it. What you're going to want to do here is aim down and fire twice. Now if you hug up on the wall, usually Jill can detect where it is even if she's not standing right over it. You have to worry about that dog. Now one thing I realized in this game... The first headshot, and this is actually shout out to Carcinogen. He's the one I think who coined it first, but then I realized it as well on my own. The first headshot that you decide to use with the shotgun will always be a headshot, except for against the Crimson Head. So if you want to use that shotgun blast to kill a specific zombie, use it wisely. There is usually a 5 to 6% out of 10 that you'll land a critical headshot with the base shotgun. And then with the assault shotgun, it's usually a 7 to 8 range for a headshot. So now we can go through the murder hall, which has two zombies and a crimson head, but since this is a no damage playthrough and we're not saving, we are going to always take the road less traveled and just head back through the dining room. There was a film on top of Kenneth. We'll get to look at that much later in the game.
So stair skating is basically holding the tank controls and spamming the action button. Uh, what I did was I recalibrated my controller to use the analog stick, which actually makes it a ton faster and saves your finger from arthritis. So it's probably the smarter move. We're going to make sure we pick up the dagger here. Now the grenade launcher will come in handy, but it won't come in handy till much later on. But we do want to have it. As I touched on earlier with Real, Su Real Survival and the item chest not being linked, we have to put these items in specific item chests that will benefit us later in the game. So we'll go ahead right now and just make sure that the acid rounds are equipped into this grenade launcher since we won't be using it for quite a bit. Richard! What happened? You're wounded! This whole place is a killing zone. There are monsters. What did this to you? A big snake. And it had to be poisonous. Poisonous? Richard, hold on. Bring me serum. I saw some, but didn't bring any. I'll go and get it, okay? You're gonna make it. Thanks. So if you look on the map, anything that's in green is 100% discovered. Anything in red, we don't go for all items in this run. But feel free if you see something in red, that means that there may be an herb or a couple things lying around. So when it comes to Richard, we have exactly four minutes to get him the serum and come on back. But in that time, we're going to run a few errands. Don't worry, he'll survive. We're going to stair skate our way right past that Zombre. And now, if you don't feel comfortable not keeping a shotgun, you could keep the shotgun in your inventory, but I choose to put it away so that I have a few extra slots. Now this zombie's a little hard to detect, but sometimes he'll be running into a wall, which will benefit you immensely. Now, I don't know why I go for the ink ribbon. I thought there was a piece of paper here. This is also where you could find the broken shotgun. go ahead and put the plant pesticide inside of the tank and we're going to turn the valve to red. Now this is where we acquire the first death mask. We need a total of four. Now, this room is optional. Do not feel that you have to go in here. But this is the researcher's room from the famous Itchy Tasty. So I wanted to be able to read the Keeper's Diary. Itchy, tasty. So we got to be careful because there's a zombie inside of the closet. Ooh. 
We're going to give a little bit of a forward walk. It'll cause him to lunge. Behind him inside of that closet is a stun gun battery. Absolutely not worth going for. Again, that room is optional in a run like this. There's nothing really special about it. Unless you want the document. So by doing all of that, we'll just make it in time over to Richard. Here, Richard. I'm going to give you a shot. Hang in there. Jill, here's my radio. Take it. I'm... <sighs> Does it ever not hurt? <laughs> I just wanted him to yell, ouch. We're going to cause this zombie to do a little bait lunge, and we're going to run inside of this room. Now, I hope you brought your lighters, because we need to light up this candle. Now, a zombie will bust in this room if we didn't kill him, and there's also a zombie in here, so be careful walking in. What we basically want to do is bait them both around the same exact way. Bring them around the table in a way where you can slowly maneuver yourself into that area and grab the musical score. So our next step right now, since we have the musical score, is we have to head to the piano room, which is on the first floor, with the strongest zombie in the video game that took two magnum shots from Barry and then walked out and closed the door, because he didn't give a shit. We have to use daggers sometimes in order to push them back in tight corridors. All you have to do is push the bookshelf once, and you can get the Moonlight Sonata. We'll go ahead and combine it. We're going to go ahead and, after we read this diary of George Trevor, we're going to swap the shields. So as we learn a little bit more about George Trevor and that he was the architect of the Spencer Mansion, we'll kind of understand where he is. We're going to go ahead and put the hollow shield inside. And now we're going to bring this golden shield back to the dining room. 
And after we read that, you can see that this is the actual lighter that Jessica Trevor gave to George Trevor that he talks about inside of his diary. Now the easiest way to solve this puzzle would be to look at the picture to the left. We're going to hit large. Large twice and left twice. We want the smaller hand on the armor, bigger hand on the helmet. And that will give us the shield key to go into my absolutely favorite room. I'm seething at the mouth, as you can tell. If you notice my character pause at any moments and kind of just stand still, I'm probably answering the chat back. Just a heads up. The only need for the shield key is the attic. Payback time. We're going to hold the D pad straight up to run right by Yawn. Now, what we want to do is we want to grab the death mask and we want to wait for Yawn to go around the first wooden beam. We're going to have Jill stand a little bit behind the wooden beam so it lures Yawn to kind of run behind it. Now, Yawn has a really weird, stupid attack that he does where he kind of like lunges his body and will hit you in the most awkward spots. So try to give yourself as much space as humanly possible. And let Richard just keep teeing off on him with the assault shotgun. Now the reason we're doing this is because we want the assault shotgun. Thanks. As soon as that cutscene ends, we're going to run over and grab the assault shotgun. Now, the assault shotgun is only a little bit better than the base shotgun, but it does make a difference on real survival, so we definitely want to make sure we get that to our advantage. We're going to run around that little bend to get away from the zombie. So inside of the night room, there is a box that is locked behind some bars. What we need to do is solve the puzzle. So top right, bottom left, and then bottom right. And then that'll automatically push the top left in on its own. That way, plugging the... F so basically, the floor underneath the knights have vents. And if we don't do it right and they're not pushed in, poisonous gas will come out and that will end the run. But this is the third death mask right here.
We'll just go ahead and dodge around that zombie. We want to come inside of this room. The deer head room. Sometimes there can be a zombie just chilling right under that deer head if you unlock the door prior to going in it and doing what you have to do. Now, the reason we're even in here to begin with is because we want the magnum. So what we want to do here is we want to grab the hook. And we're going to want to combine it with the yellow bee. Once we grab this wind crest, it is important to grab the magnum. There is a bee that is alive that we had on us. We want to make sure we don't get stung, so we want to grab this item very fast and get the hell out of this room. And now we have all of the death mass and the assault shotgun, so we want to just go make sure that we go underneath the stairs, watch out for that zombie, and we want to grab our extra shotgun ammo, put away the lighter, we only have one more use for the armor key. So we're going to go ahead and grab our extra shotgun ammo, and now we are going to fight our first boss of the game, Elder Crimson. So for the stained glass puzzle, it's going to be the first picture. Then once you round the corner, we're going to hit the saint right here. The yellow one, we're going to turn green. And then the old wise man exactly next to him, we're going to turn purple. That will match Lisa Trevor's mother picture on the wall with the colors. Here is the final death mask. Now, we will be using this courtyard gate quite a bit. And remember, Jill having the lockpick is just absolutely amazing because it's one less thing we have to look for in small keys for Chris. Just going to match the heads along with hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Best thing to do over here is to pump cancel, and what that means is when you shoot, you're going to hit the D-pad up to stop the animation of her pumping the shotgun. Now, if he grabs you, don't worry about it. A dagger to the head will finish him off. If not, just spin with your analog stick and just pop him with the last shot. Takes about four shots with the assault shotgun to take out Elder Crimson, and congratulations, you have beaten the first boss.
we're going to fake that guy out with just a quick lunge. What you want to do for that zombie usually is take about two or three steps, then hit back on the D-pad to get him to lunge, and then run right around him. Now, since we got this umbrella logo, we're going to put it inside there. Some shotgun shells on the floor. Those are absolutely necessary. Stun battery. So for this part, there is a puzzle, and we need to make sure that the cardinal directions are facing west for the red one and north for the blue. The body Over. Barry? Monster! Chains! So now get your assault shotgun or regular shotgun ready. We're going to aim right at these two crows. We're going to wait two seconds. Once we see crows flying overhead, we're going to pop those two. And that takes care of the crows trying to nip at us while we get the magnum. Basically, we just have to examine these metals. They seem to have projecting lines coming out of them. It doesn't matter what order, it'll automatically do it for you. But we have to put all three of these in. Now once that's done, we're going to go ahead and grab the Magnum, the Silver Serpent. And now we're going to make our way up this small mountain to Lisa Trevor's shack. Now what I picked up there was the map of the courtyard. I pick up a few of the maps just to show people where they are. We're going to need this crank. Now make sure you have your magnum equipped right here. Even at 120 FPS it is very hard to dodge Lisa. Doink! Now as soon as we awake you're going to want to have your fingers ready on your controller or if you do use the keyboard and mouse for this game, I pray for your sanity. And we're going to put three magnum shots into Lisa. Then we can run right by her. The reason I don't recommend dodging her 
is because she has two different attacks. She could either attack forward, which is what you want, but nine times out of ten, she knows what you're trying to do, and she will do her backwards attack, which will lead to you taking damage. There is now a zombie inside of the woods, so we're just going to hug behind the trees and make our way over to the guardhouse. to Brad. Can you hear me? Shit. It's broken. Three canines are populated here. Best thing to do is to use your magnum. The reason I choose to use the magnum here, and we will get more magnum ammo, don't worry, is because the shotgun takes two shots to kill them and doesn't do enough damage on the canine, so when you shoot it, even if you pump cancel, the dog only kind of like runs backwards a little bit, gets like barely stunned, and you end up getting bit. So it's best to just use the most powerful weapon in your possession. So as we're making our way to the guardhouse, we have to keep in mind that this area right here will eventually will be infested with baby snakes. This is a choke point. They call that a choke point basically because it could end your run. We have to make sure that we run a specific way in order to avoid being poisoned by them. We'll just outrun the crows here, no problem. Easy peasy. So once inside of the guardhouse, we want to be a little careful with what we do. Now, there are spiders inside of the guardhouse, inside of the bar, I would call it. We're going to drop off the magnum and the crank for now, but we will come back for them later. Now, this spider is a dick. He has... me and him have had words. There have been times where he's run up on me, and there have been times where he's just shot poison at me. So we made a mutual agreement. I am going to wait for him to pass. So once he starts climbing up on the wall, that is Q that you could go. Now we need to push the crate over approximately three times. And then push it down. Now the reason being is because the plant will grab you between those two. Now in the OG Resident Evil there was only one hole in the ground that the plant 42 can grab you. In the remake they decided to treat us to two holes where we could get destroyed. Jill, 
Barry, I heard someone talking. Oh, you heard. I think age is starting to take its toll. Talking to myself is becoming a bad habit. Talking to yourself? You all right? What's gotten into you? I'm getting you worried, aren't I? But don't, I'm all right. I guess this creepy mansion has gotten to my nerves. Anyway, I think I'll go outside, get some fresh air for a change. Don't worry, I'm just going to get some fresh air. If I'm lucky, I'll get to waste some monsters along the way. Some information on Plant 42. So now once we come inside of this room, we're going to wait a second, we're going to grab the key, and a zombie is going to treat us with his presence. If you have a stun gun or a dagger, it's safe to just knock it down. By having the zombie come inside of this room, we no longer ever have to worry about him again. We never have to go inside of the bathroom, and it is not a door that he can break down and leave. We're going to go ahead and open up the aquarium area, but we're not going to go there just yet, because we need to get the key. We're going to come back over inside of this room. This poor fellow is no longer with us. We want the self-defense gun, and we're going to read this note. Once that's done, we're going to head into the bathroom. The key to the aquarium is located inside of the dirty water in here. Once we grab that key, the zombie inside of the room falls as well as that zombie gets up. So we want to make our great escape. So now if you saw the document that I clicked on in that hallway, it said that there were a lot of newspapers regarding STARS, which Jill and her team are a part of the STARS Alpha team, as well as Bravo team being here. Now, as you can tell, a lot of fishy things are going on, and the reason that the STARS members were sent in here may have not have been to find out what's going on.
we're just going to go ahead and push these crates over. It's a little time consuming, but it'll make a path because the devs didn't want us to be able to swim. Now, we're going to go ahead and equip that self-defense gun that we have. It's a one-shot, one-kill on pretty much any monster. Am I actually going to equip it, or am I going to just stare at the items? There we go. Now, you could outrun the sharks here. By unequipping all of your weapons. I am going to tell you folks that I do not recommend that. I recommend just constantly resetting the room. Now, since we have no auto-aim, we want to wait till it gets inside of our view. Self-defense gun is useless now. We took out one of them. Now we're going to pump cancel with the shotgun. Our last shark. Two. And usually when it flops like that in the water, that means it's dead. It's just easier to take them out and safer than it would be to try to outrun them. The few times that I did try to outrun them, they got me. Although other people have had really good fortune with it. Once they're killed, we're just going to hug the aquarium wall. And we're going to keep an eye on Neptune, because sometimes he likes to jump out and scare us. And we're going to make our way to the aquarium control room. So it's good to press this board right here because it tells you the actual uh, oil pressure button that we're going to have to press. This is the aqua ring. So this is just showing you the map and the diagram of all the locations where there could be some items. Detected. Locking all doors to achieve maximum safety. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to release the safety mechanism for the pressure. And then we're going to pull the control lever. Now, the control lever is unfortunately going to get jammed. And the pressure moves pretty quick on real survival. So we got to get this going fast. We're going to go over here to the pressure switches. And I believe it was two, I accidentally hit three, but the board did tell us. Actually, it was one. All right, that worked out. Yeah, the board, that whiteboard, will always tell you what it is. I must have not have been paying attention. Go ahead and release the safety, and then pull that lever to get the shutter down so Neptune cannot fill this room with water and drown us. Alright, so now that the water is completely drained, we need to go and grab a key. Now before you run through this door, shining on the floor, is a pack of magnum rounds. We definitely want to grab those magnum rounds because I think we get one more set of magnum rounds on real survival and that is it. So we need to make sure we use our magnum shots wisely. So this is Neptune. And I guess you could call this a boss fight. It's not really much of one, considering it takes five seconds. Now, there is something called the Neptune Skip, which a lot of runners use. It is... quite challenging. 
And what I mean by the Neptune skip basically is instead of pushing the generator in the water, you hold the D-pad directly to the Jill's left and you let him lunge and completely miss you. That way it saves a little bit of time and you don't have to do the generator. My thought process is here, if we want to be safe and uh, avoid any sort of, sort of contact, we're just going to go ahead and push the generator in, not make it more difficult for ourselves. As you can see, there's a map on that wall north of us, but we're not going to go ahead and grab it yet. That'll let in a shit ton of bees. And yes, this game, of course, has more bees. We're going to go ahead and grab the insecticide spray. Now, just avoid these uh, bees. You know, you could kind of zigzag around them. I'm pretty sure if you're just constantly running, they can't actually hit you. So when you go over to this hole in the wall that's being blocked by the map, make sure you're pressing the action button. Don't press the button to examine the wall because then bees will pour in. We're going to go ahead and use the insecticide inside of the hole in the wall, and that will destroy the beehive along with the bees. Now, this uh, puzzle could be randomized. It uh, always is to the numbers 6, 3, and 5. So sometimes you have to do them in different orders, like 3, 6, 5, 6, 5, 3, 6, 3, 5. But it will always be those three numbers, just depending on what the randomization is in this playthrough. So there is some RNG in this game, absolutely. We want to go down over here first, though, because we want to make some room, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating the V-Jolt. Now, the V-Jolt is a powerful insecticide that will hurt Plant 42 immensely. So that paper is basically explaining to you what the V-Jolt is, how it is useful to stop Plant 42, or if the plants get out of hand. And we're going to go ahead and rearrange these books. Now that dresser moves, and that's the doorway over to the Plant 42 boss fight, but we are not going to go there yet. What we want to do is weaken Plant 42. It will save us ammo, and it will save us the opportunity of taking damage. Now, we're going to take the nitric acid glasses. There's a total of four of them. And we are going to do the combination as follows. So it's basically arithmetic. We're going to take UMB number three. We're going to mix it with water. So that is UMB number 3, water equates to 1, 3 and 1 makes 4. We are going to go ahead and take some yellow 6. We're going to fuse the Wario colors together, and that makes 10. We're going to take 6, and we're going to mix it with 1. And that's going to make 7. We're going to combine those, and that has 17. And then all we need is 3, so we'll take some UMB 3. And in order to make the Vigil, you just need to add to 20. And there's your V-Jolt. Not much commentary at this very moment. All we have to do is head back to the Aqua Ring and plant the V-Jolt at the roots of Plant 42.
And so since the water is drained, we cannot pass through where the boxes were, so we kind of have to go back through the control room. And here are where Plant 42's roots are. We're going to go ahead and use the V-Jolt. Gives us the option to get rid of the nice nitric acid glasses. Again, if you see me pause at any moment, that usually just means I'm answering back some people in the chat. A lot of the time, I do these runs live on my YouTube. Come check it out. So once we get going and we get out of the aqua ring, we are going to now head up to the Plant 42 room, and instead of having to fight Plant 42, there will be a cutscene. What the hell is this thing? Barry! Jill! was finished. Yeah. That was close. Thanks again. Don't mention it. But what was that? What the hell's going on in this place? What the hell is going on here? Barry, don't act like you don't know. So now we got the helmet key, and we are heading over to Mansion 2. So we're going to make our way out of the guardhouse and head back to the mansion for one more final time. Wesker! Jill, so you're safe. That's what I was going to say. I apologize. It was all I could do to protect myself against those strange creatures. I understand. Anyway, it's good that you're safe. Did you notice? Barry, you sounded a little flaky. Now that you mention it, yeah. I'll keep a close eye. Maybe it's quite natural under these circumstances. It's not really our standard operation. Jill, our first priority is to get out of here. I agree. There are still rooms in that mansion we can't get into because they're locked up. I've been looking for ways to... Okay, if there's anything, I'll go back to the other mansion. I'm counting on you. We 
We can leave the self-defense gun here. It's absolutely useless. We want to grab the magnum and the crank, though. This is Brad. Come in, Stars Alpha Team. Come in. This is Jill. Does anybody hear me? I hear you, Brad. Over. Stars Alpha Team. Bravo Team. It doesn't matter. Respond. I repeat, this is Brad. Brad? Brad! This is Brad. If you can't answer me, somehow give me a sign. Jill to Brad. Can you hear me? Brad! Brad! Shit. It's broken. Alright, so... Once Chicken Heart basically asks us where we are, we're going to come out here, we combine the Magnum Ammo, and we're going to use said Magnum Ammo to blow away these canines. Don't waste your time with the shotgun, again. Apparently the game says there's hits done with the shotgun, but for me it never works, so I go ahead and just use the Magnum. And this is one of our favorite parts, the baby snakes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to equip the shotgun. We're going to hug Jill's left side. There is one snake sitting in the corner here. What we're going to do is we're going to make a run. Pull those snakes out. One more snake's going to jump out. We're going to hug the side. And that is the first pass through. Once we pick up the shotgun ammo and the dagger, we see that Barry was actually nice enough. We have a cutscene. Alright, we got hunters chilling inside of the mansion now, so we gotta be smart. We're gonna pull out the magnum, pop this hunter right in the face. Now, sometimes the hunters are pretty strong. Pop another one with the magnum. We could go ahead and equip the shotgun because sometimes these hunters take a little bit more TLC to go down. But we were fortunate enough for two magnum shots to do the trick. We're going to go ahead and drop off the magnum, the crank, and we're going to... I think I was just making sure there was nothing else I needed. We're going to hold on to the shotgun, the shotgun ammo, and the helmet key. So we'll go ahead and push the statue all the way down. As you can see, the walls are a trap. And once we hit that button, we're going to come back around and we are going to push the statue and it will lock itself in place. And that will solve that puzzle. Usually on a normal difficulty, there is a dagger chilling there or a stun battery, but, you know, real survival and all.
these are the final documentations of George Trevor's journal and what happened to his fate. Once we come down here, we have to watch out for the spider. Sometimes he can be a little aggressive. And then other times he's kind of just standing in place. Now you could easily dodge around these zombies, but again, rather safe than sorry. I'm going to wait for these zombies to pull up. And we're just going to take them down. And once they're dead, we'll go ahead and turn the electricity back on. We're never coming back here again, so it doesn't really make a difference. We'll wait for this guy to come out and uh, greet us. up on the elevator. Now sometimes this zombie is in a weird angle and he could grab you. So we just want to keep our eyes peeled. Inside of the closet we have magnum ammo. This is the last of the magnum ammo we will be getting folks so make sure you use it rationed. shotgun shells, we also got some stun battery, and the most important thing is the elevator battery. Now before we can head into the underground catacombs, there's a few things we still have to do in Mansion 2. So we need to shut the light off in this room. Some more information on how Umbrella is just shitty. So when that eagle eye is keeping an eye on us, it will lock the jewels in place. So we have to basically run underneath it in order to avoid its gaze and stop us from pulling the jewels out of the animal heads. We need both jewels. The yellow jewel is going to be used to grab the first MO disc. And the red jewel is necessary for continuation of the game. Now the reason we're collecting the MO discs is because the MO discs are for the best ending. And it is very important to grab them. So this save room right here, I just wanted to see if there was any documentation. We're going to go ahead and put the magnum ammo away. We will be back this way a little bit later. This is where we're going to come back for our grenade launcher. And realistically, we don't need the grenade shells right now. We just need the acid rounds.
Just wanted to do a quick double check. And yes, of course, hunters will bash through. We still have zombies in this hallway. Now, if you read the text on the lion, or the tiger, it says a tiger with yellow and blue eyes. So if you put the red eye in, snakes will drop down and probably poison you. So if you put the yellow eye in, you will get the MO disc, which is important to get, like I said, the best ending. There is also a blue jewel that is on the floor in the dining room, and if you put that in, you get shotgun shells. Again, it's really not important because it's really only six shotgun shells. So before we go uh, take on Yawn, because the Yawn boss battle is coming up. We'll read some more of journals. Now this is a mirror room. This room could be quite an illusion and it could actually cause you to get bit. So just make sure if you're not going to kill the zombie in it, you keep your distance. Once out of that room, we're going to go ahead and solve the puzzle. The puzzle pieces will fit in no matter what. No matter which way you put them in, they will always make the same shape. And will always take the same amount of turns. So I like to just do it from the base being down. Hit right there. And then we just got to line this one up. And, yep, we get the emblem key. Now again, before we go take on Yawn, which is going to be the final part of Mansion 2, we just want to kind of deliberate where we want to put all of our items. So what I like to do is I like to go back to the cemetery and I like to put all of my stuff inside of the save chest underneath the stairs where we took out the hunters. A hunter is going to be facing you head on. You're just going to want to use your analog stick or d-pad to go right to this room. That key is a one-time use, so we'll turn the power on. I love this room. The ambience is unbelievable. Go inside the drawer. We got some shotgun shells. The metal object. That's what we need. And another stun gun battery. Man, we are loaded up on defense items, and it is very important. Drop off the MO disc. We're going to drop off the Medal of the Eagle. And the shotgun shells, because we will be back this way before we leave. We'll cut our way back through the courtyard. But now we're going to use the rest of the helmet key and take on Yawn. So once we travel through this hallway, the room where we got the armor key and we switched it with the fake key, there's actually a door behind there, considering this entire mansion is just one big labyrinth. And that will lead us to the library. It's actually a back door to the library. If I ever decide to move, we will get there.
And just so you guys know, I do commentary after the fact. So we're just going to run straight ahead. So this will be a good spot for you to equip your grenade launcher with the acid rounds. It's going to take a total of four acid rounds to kill Yawn. We can hit him with three right up here. By pump cancelling, it takes away the animation. And now we just have to hit him with one more shot. Ball in. And that's it. We'll go ahead and grab the book. This will give us the Medal of the Wolf. So, I want to make some room here, and I know it seems kind of not intelligent to waste the acid rounds right there, but we actually don't need them, so we want to free up a little bit of space. Now, this is a little bit of a tough dodge. It was a good thing this zombie grabbed us. We're able to use that, and that gives us enough time to run right through the door. Again, the murder hall is one of the toughest areas in the game. Now, we have hunters chilling in this hallway now, which is absolutely terrifying. But we're going to just skate our way down. I didn't know that they installed escalators inside of the Spencer Mansion. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and grab everything that we need. Do a quick double check. And we're going to get ourselves out of here. If you run to the right side of the hunter, he will turn around, and that way you could run right past him. Now there's one, there's two hunters actually up here. This one, same thing. It is static as long as you keep running and you hit the door, he will never hit you. Now we need to go back to the save room. And we need to deposit and grab a couple of different things. Because before we could head down to the laboratory, we do have to head to the underground catacombs. So we're going to put the Medal of the Wolf away. And we can go ahead and combine our shotgun shells. We're going to go ahead and reload our magnum, and we could put the spare magnum ammo away for now. Could grab it later on. Got to get that knife out of there. And we need the crank. You don't know how many times the crank has been forgotten. Not today. So this hunter is literally always chilling there, so what we'll do is we'll go back through the portrait room, reset the room. Then we're going to turn around. And once we go right through, Hunter's going to babble like a moron, go for a swing, but we're already 10 miles in front of him. So 
So this is the second part with the baby snakes. Again, another choke point that could end the run this far in. So the best method that I figured out was as soon as you come up the ladder, you're going to use the D-pad to turn Jill to the left, hug that wall, then hug the right wall over here. These snakes will not attack you. And voila, you got past the baby snakes. Since we took out the canines here, they do not respawn, so we could just go ahead and drop the battery right in here, because what we need to do basically is... We need to get that waterfall that we just passed out of the way. And in order to do that, we need to use the crank to turn the water off. Okay, once that's done, we'll turn back around, hit the elevator, and head to the underground. We're gonna go ahead and drop the crank in there. We don't need it ever again. Now we have to be mindful of this area. There will be hunters that populate this area, so keep that in mind, because a lot of the time it's easy to forget. Is that you, Jill? Is that voice Enrico's? Yeah. You're alive! Stop! Are you with anybody, Jill? No. But why? <sighs> the stars are finished. Someone is a traitor. Umbrella set us up. Enrico! <laughs> <sighs> Traitor? Who? Dun dun dun! We got no idea. So basically she has to caress him, I don't know why. And we're gonna grab a different shape crank. The hunter will just come out and yell randomly, but we're going to run right by him. Now, remember what I said, there are hunters back in this hallway, so we have to make sure we do something quite perfectly. So as soon as we run up, we're going to keep running, keep running. This guy will jump right over us and totally miss. And now we're going to go ahead and use the crank. Chris when we need him to boulder punch. I hope they make a reference in the remake. Now, this is the Black Tiger spider fight. Equip your magnum. This fight is pretty brutal if it goes the wrong way. So as soon as this fight begins, you're going to follow exactly what I say. 
he could either rush you, or he could shoot acid at you. Either way, if you run that path, you absolutely destroy him. Takes about four shots with the Magnum to end him. I like to reset the room, because if you reset the room, the baby spiders that come out of him despawn, as well as the other spider in that room. So, on top of the barrels is a random knife. We're going to chop the webbing, and we're going to keep going. So right here we're going to use the crank three times. We want to spin whatever this labyrinth that George Trevor created so that we have a path to the left. And once I decide to start moving, we're going to head right in here. Now, this is a puzzle room. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the statue a few pushes. Now, once it's lined up with that weird part of the wall, we're going to go ahead and use the crank. And there's actually a slab of the wall that pushes the statue out. So once it pushes it out, we're going to go ahead and use the crank again to put it away. And basically what we need to do for this puzzle is to push the statue on the platform so that it makes a 360. And we could push it into the space adjacent to the other statue. I don't know why I pushed it that way. But basically, now that we have the statue turned around, we're just going to push it over to Jill's right. So now once the puzzle is complete, we're going to go ahead and grab the cylinder. And we're going to backtrack all the way to the elevator in the underground. We'll go ahead and drop off the second crank as well as the knife. They are all useless going forward. Keep in mind there are hunters in this hallway. Hug the left side of the wall. Don't panic. Go right through. Password for this is 4231. 
So all we have to do is combine the silver cylinder with the gold cylinder and then hit 4231 and we get the lift or elevator. Jill! Barry? Thank God you're safe. You too, Jill. A noise I heard brought me down here, but I didn't expect to find a place like this. Have any idea as to what might be at the bottom? There's only one way to find out. What the hell is that sound? It could be a person. Jill, go check it out. We had enough surprises for one day. I'll stay here and secure our escape route in case something happens. Okay. Alright, so since Barry's gonna act all weird, we're gonna go on ahead and we are going to run into the lovely Lisa Trevor. So, a little trick to this area. Whichever way you go, Lisa will spawn. So if you don't want her to spawn in front of the way you have to go, turn the opposite way. So once we go ahead and push the crate onto the lift, there's some handgun ammo as well as some more of a stun gun battery. I have to have like 15 of these. It's unbelievable. So again, we're going to trick Lisa, skate down those stairs, come back around, and now we're going to go see... What goodies are in that crate? Barry! Real nice, Barry. Such a gentleman. So it looks like we have everything in our inventory that we need. Once we come down this ladder, whatever is inside of the crate, we're going to go and push the crate and receive the item. Once we hit the button, and we absolutely crush the flamethrower, we are going to take the broken flamethrower, and we're going to head back to where Lisa was. Alright, so Lisa's looking fine over there. We'll go ahead and hit the crank. <laughs> and that will pull out the... I don't know. Clamps to put the broken flamethrower? Weird puzzle, I know. So 
So this is uh, Lisa's lair. Some weird dolls and candles. Lots of candles and lots of creepy dolls. We're going to run through this swamp infested water. There are snakes following us. You don't want to get bit by them, so just keep running. There's only two of them. And we're inside of Lisa's bedroom. Once we go ahead and grab the jewelry box, we're going to go ahead and examine it. And inside we have the ring that we could put on top of the metal object. Pretty tragic story, what happened to Lisa. Yeah, so pretty terrible, disgusting experiments were done on her. And unfortunately, we learned that George Trevor basically starved to death when he fell inside of that trap. The saddest part is, and I think that if they do another remake to this game, we could really learn a lot more about the situations that took place prior to Stars getting here. Because reading the documents, you understand that there is a lot more that took place here prior. And once we come up that ladder, we're at back at uh, Lisa's shack. Just hug the right side of the gate. Those zombies will not hit you if you stick to the right. never have to go back that way again, so we're going to go ahead and grab the second metal object. We could cut through the portrait room. Underneath the lobby stairs is a door. We need both metal objects. We are also going to backtrack. We wanted to throw those metal objects in first so that we don't have to try to find a way to carry everything because we only have a certain amount of slots. All right, folks, we got all of our stuff. We're going to be heading over to the laboratory very shortly. 
Now, we're running low on magnum ammo, but again, because we have the assault shotgun, it kind of makes a difference towards the end of the game. So now that we have all of the items necessary to continue, we are going to traverse down to Lisa's lair. I swear, Lisa's got like 16 lairs in this game. Jill, you're alive. I was worried, because I thought you were... Start talking. Calm down. I didn't want to do it. Believe me, I can explain. Don't lie to me. to talk. Jill, hand me my gun! So in this instance, since we want the best ending, we're going to give Barry his gun. Now, Barry does a semi-decent job of keeping Lisa busy. We hope that he makes the shots necessary. In order to end this, whatever you want to call it, you could either shoot Lisa off of a ledge, or you could push all of these stones off in order to release... Wow, Barry... Coming through, baby. In order to release the grave that is in the middle. We want to keep an eye on where Lisa is. She has backwards attacks, forward attacks, sideways attacks. She can literally attack anyway. Let Barry just steamroll her for a bit. Once we push this last one off, we make sure that Barry doesn't get knocked off. And that's it. I don't believe that thing's really dead. Leave this place up to me and go on ahead. Okay. And now, folks, we make our way to the laboratory. We're going to put the Medal of the Wolf in first. And then the Medal of the Eagle. Making my way downtown. Okay, we have entered the lab. Now, I won't lie. There are a couple of co uh, close calls in the lab, but we make it work. So, since we don't have the canteen to burn zombies once they're down... That always works. But what we're going to do is we're going to down these two zombies... And flame rounds actually do the exact same trick as the canteen burning dead zombies so they don't turn into crimson heads. And it just so happens that in an area of the lab, we could find some. Now what we want to do after we reload our shotgun is we want to run back this way and there is a second MO disc sitting on the table. We need all three MO discs for the best ending. 
the hallway to Jill's right, no, left, has one zombie inside of it. Hopefully with the Magnum you get the critical headshot, as you just saw me do, because we need to go down that hallway quite a bit. It is the safest route. We're going to go ahead over at the computer and we're going to type in John Ada, and then the third password is Cell. It's funny, on the third password, if you type in Mole, because that's the password in RE1 Original, you get Tofu's voice. Alright, so we've powered on every door that was electronically locked. Again, we have ourselves another stun battery. Seriously, I think I could start selling these. First thing we're going to do is head up to this double door to the projector room. Have to be mindful that those zombies, if we go through too many doors, will turn into a will turn into crimson heads. Alright, the passcode for the terminal is 8462. And now this is the room where we could see what happened to our fellow stars member Kenneth. Yeah, absolutely obliterated. I don't know why Kenneth, uh, he kind of looked like a stormtrooper there. He was missing every single shot. Or I should say a, a clone trooper. So once we do that, we could head back down through this way. I'm going to go ahead and exhaust the laboratory key to get rid of it. And there is a save room directly straight ahead. This is where we could get, grab the flame rounds. Now, since I didn't want them turning into Crimson Heads, because it could be a real pain in the ass, I decided to backtrack here and just take them out with the Flame Rounds. Better safe than sorry. So we'll go through this door right here because we're going to go ahead and take care of the first MO disc.
Now, by inserting the MO disc into these machines, we're actually trying to unlock a door that cannot be opened until we power up the elevator. So now we're going to go through these double doors because there is another MO disc machine in this room. So if we push this shelf a little bit out of the way, we could get some shotgun shells right there on the left. And we're going to jump through the vent. Now we're going to go directly straight up. And there are chimeras in this area, which are I absolutely despise. We're going to go ahead and use a second MO disc. We're going to run to the right. We're going to let that chimera drop down so that we could just snake our way through. And we're going to go all the way down to the last vent. And that'll get us out of this room. So there is one more Chimera. Well, there's actually a few more Chimeras, but one gives me a lot of trouble to where I actually almost took some damage. But we got fortunate enough that he missed. So this zombie, these zombies do not turn into Crimson Heads, so do not worry about killing them. I have no patience for the bullshit that the Chimeras throw my way, so I pull out the Magnum. Now, I know this bastard's this way. I go to shoot, and he completely misses me right there. Just completely misses me. I'm telling you, I got so lucky. He was just out of frame from where he could actually do damage to my leg. If Jill would take any damage, she would make a noise and blood would actually come out. So I will say we got quite lucky right there. But hey, sometimes you need a little bit of luck to do these kind of runs. Now we're going to go ahead and grab the fuel supply capsule. Basically, what we have to do now is we have to head back to the room where we put the first MO disc in. In that room is a dispensary for nitroglycerin. With nitroglycerin, we cannot run. We have got to walk. Now, there is a way to take a few running steps and pace yourself because I don't believe it is based on movement. It's based on clicks and how many steps you take in a running fashion. We're not going to take any chances here going to just refuel it, be on our merry way. Just remember to walk. The best way to do that is to not even touch the analog stick, but just use the D-pad tank controls. Alright, so now we've entered back into the fueling station room, the blast furnace, and we could hear that there's other chimeras in this area, but we don't have to worry about them to the right. Once we place the fuel capsule inside, we are okay to run. Basically what that did was that powered up so we could turn on the elevator. Now, I'm resetting the room because I don't know if that chimera dropped down, don't re really want any problems. It jumps down as soon as I go through the door. Now here is where we're going to use the last MO disc.
And as you can see why I tend to not use the assault shotgun on enemies if I could use the magnum, it takes quite a bunch of shots. The remainder of the chimera in this area we are just going to completely run away from. Or run around. So now we just have to backtrack, avoid get taking any hits from the chimera. And now we'll head for the elevator. And we are in the end game now, folks. Jill! Barry! You could have at least waited up for me, you know? Let's go. Thank you, Barry. Well, what do you know? Oh, don't blame Barry for everything. I hear that his better half and two lovely daughters will be in danger if he doesn't do everything I tell him to. <sighs> Wesker, you're pathetic. Well, you shouldn't worry too much, dear. You'll be free of all this anyway. Why eliminate stars? Believe it or not, that's Umbrella's intention. You're just a slave of Umbrella. Smart girl. But I think you misunderstand me. The things you mention are nothing. I'll burn all of them along with this entire laboratory. Barry, go up on the ground and wait there. Barry? <laughs> you gotta love Barry. He must really be afraid of Umbrella. You and Umbrella took his family, you bastard. Oh! Umbrella? Well, I used some carrots and sticks to cow him, but it had nothing to do with Umbrella. I just used Barry for my personal interests. Though both you and Barry seemed to think I was following Umbrella's orders. What? What are you planning? I guess it's time for show and tell. It's magnificent. For the sake of this thing. You know, I hate goodbyes. <gasps> Barry! Forgive me. No, you're not to blame. It's Umbrella and Wesker. Even if it meant my family, I couldn't bear turning my back on my friends again. Damn it! <laughs> Jill and Barry together in hell. You want a piece of me? What? Premature. No, Barry! What was Barry planning to do there? Cultured freak. 
Alright, so we're going to instantly run away, because if you stand there and try to shoot Tyrant, he is going to swing at you. We're going to wait until he gets into our camera angle, and we're just going to keep turning around. And we're going to keep pump-canceling the shotgun into him. Should take about seven, eight shots to put him down. We're going to wait for him right here. Just getting a good range of where he is. Tyrant walks in this first phase, so you don't really have to worry. And that takes care of him. And that's like a little observation note prelude to the next games in the series, Resident Evil 2, Code Veronica. Basically 2, 3, and Code Veronica. We're going to run back here, a lot of test subjects. And we're going to open the emergency lock, and then we're going to check on Barry. Barry! Barry! <sighs> Uh, you're okay. Uh, Jill, sorry. That was careless of me. Wesker. He's gone. First, let's just get out of here. Wesker must have set it off. Let's hurry! Alright, so now that the self-destruct system has been activated, it releases every single lock, so now we could go save Chris. Best ending, you need to save Barry and Chris. Unfortunately, there is no actual canon ending to this game. Because Rebecca is technically supposed to be with us. Glad to see you are too. Anything on Wesker? We'll talk later. First, let's get going. So we could go back inside of this room and actually grab some flame rounds. And what's kind of creepy is... You could examine the surveillance camera. Can't tell if it's working or not. But if you kind of notice, in this game, every camera angle almost looks like we're looking through a camera. I know there was a theory that was discussed quite a while ago. Come on, let's go. All right, all that's left is the final battle with Tyrant. Don't know why I tried picking this up. The self-destruct 
system has been activated. All personnel must evacuate immediately. Come on, come on, hurry! Gotta fix that radio there, Brad. I'm blaming you, not myself. Three minutes to detonation. Damn it! We're almost there! Jill, you just hit in contact with Brad. No! We can make it. Jill, ladies first. Chris! Would you let me have my moments, too? All right. We'll rendezvous at the heliport. So we're going to go ahead and just place the signal rockets, combine out our flame ammo because the OCD was bothering me. And the final showdown is underway. So with Tyrant, we want to make sure that we stay on the opposite side of his swinging arm. We're going to stay in camera angle. When we lose the camera angle and we cannot see him, that's when danger can occur. I'm just going to keep laying shotgun shells into this bastard. Stay inside of the same camera angle. Let him do his little swing. That one we got a little bit too close. These camera angles can totally screw you up. He did a swipe instead of a dash right there. Got three shotgun shells left. Jill, use it! Kill it! Whatever it is! And you guys are going to see how close it was to me getting this run. <laughs> because in the final instance, Tyrant wanted my... Butt cheeks. So he knocks it off, and watch how close this swing is. Wow. And that's it, folks. No save, no damage, real survival with the best ending. Yeah, and that is it. I want to thank everybody so much. We have gained so many followers in the past year. It is unbelievable. Whether you just follow from watching one of my videos, certain parts of them, watching my live streams, 
or just throwing me a follow. It really has meant a lot how much we've grown. I can't thank you guys enough and joining Team Hitless. There have been a lot of great things that have taken place from 2023 to 2024. And I hope you guys enjoyed this run. If this run helps you at all, please consider commenting on the video, liking the video, and subscribing to the channel. We have plenty more coming your way. And once again, this is the Notorious Base signing out. I'll see you for the next one. Jill, you did a fine job.